All right, so let's play with this some more. Let's get in a little closer. Okay, and let's go to my brush once again. And I think what I'll do is I'm gonna hold, uh, tag and release, shift key to here, shift key to there to get more of a straighter edge, not bad. And here, I think what I'll do is I'll do something similar. So click here, shift to there, and then shift straight on up. Okay, I'm gonna fill in the rest of this. Okay, so I'm thinking that I would like this to kind of give you a visual joining with this piece here. So we have some options. And this is a tool I think will be really fun because um, the next one I'm going to show you because if I go ahead and select, say for example, the B, so I want to just isolate this effect to the B. So if you want to isolate uh, an effect in Photoshop to any area of your of your uh, of your image plane, just simply select it. You can utilize the rectangular tool here. You can utilize your lasso tool, your polygonal tool, whatever you like. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is just showing you this as an option. So, uh, image edit menu transform, and you've got what's called warp, right? So we can warp things around like this to create some very interesting. Um, looking options so that's not what I want to do for this one I just thought it'd be something I um, I just want to kind of bring to your attention a lot a lot, a lot of people are not always aware of that particular tool so I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna hit the escape key right about here but what I can do and I'm thinking of doing is maybe applying it just to this edge here so I'm gonna get in close come over here grab the rectangle select it and what I like to do is, I'm gonna do it again, I accidentally deselected it, there we are. What I like to do is go to my edit menu, transform, and go to my warp. And let's see if I can pull that out like so, like that. That'll give it a little bit of a difference. Pull it past this, um, this plane here where that edge is coming from, and then hit enter, okay? And command D for, for deselect. So it's a little bit more of a rounded edge on the end. And the theme of this piece is that the ends are either tapered sharp or they're a nice, um, you know, a sharp edge vertically or horizontally across. So what I like to do, I mean, if I was going to have this as rounded, I would want to round off everything. That may be another option. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll explore that next. Um, so, but in the meantime, I'll go to my rectangular tool set the edge let's see if we get a little closer here set it along the edge of the side of the M and bring it straight on up that means that whole area is selected so I hit delete key just to flatten that out okay just to keep the, the, the current theme all right SMB that looks looking pretty good now we talked about exploring the idea of maybe rounding these off a little bit. We'll make we'll duplicate that layer since I have all the work done already. Then why don't we go Command or Control J, duplicate it, which I've done. And I'm going to alter the color again with that layer targeted. Command or Control U for hue and saturation, and we'll just change it to a different color, right? So maybe something. Yeah, we'll go to more of a reddish. That'll work. Click OK. All right, I have a brand new layer. Command S to save it so I don't lose it. All right, and I'm going to put it somewhere where I know I can find it. I'll go design. I'm going to go click it and yes. All right. Now, what you guys are going to do is um, when you design your logos, you will do the same thing for your homework assignments. You're going to design them in layers. I want to see in layers a step or a progression of how you arrived your finished piece. This will be due next Saturday, of course. Um, so this week, this all I want you to do is just work on your logo. So this will be a really easy, simple assignment. Should take you very no time to do, um, which is why I'm giving this assignment to you now, is so that you so that because of its simplicity, um, and again, ex executing it is going to be simple. But the idea part of of creating what you think you might want may be a little bit more complicated. 
Um, but I want you to put focus your attention just on a nice, clean looking logo um, of your choice. So play around with this. All right, now I want to round this off. Variety of ways we can do it. I can take the brush and just paint it in easily, right? Or I can use my um, my warp tool. So if I go to my rectangle and it's like just that tip, just like right there. And if I go to my edit menu, transform warp, and I can just warp it round just like so. That looks great. Hit enter. Do the do the same thing to the next one. Select it. Warp tool is fun. So edit menu, transform, warp, and just tap it. Get that warp in there. There we go. Um, it's giving it a different look, isn't it? Uh, let's go ahead and grab these. Select that very quickly. Now the M key, M is in man, is a shortcut for marquee, or also for this rectangular tool here. Edit menu, transform, let's go ahead and warp it. Get in close, fill the screen with your shape. Wherever you tap is where it's gonna warp it. It's rounding it. See the, see the shapes here? That's your vector shape. It's using a vector tool um, to transform the shape of your of your raster-based pixel graphics underneath. Hit enter on the keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Select that piece um, and go ahead and edit menu, transform, warp. No, there is no, um, no redo option here. You know, you're gonna have to go to each one and select it with the selection tool there. Right, got it. Get in close, fill the screen with the shape, edit menu, transform, warp. If you're really good at drawing, well, then you're welcome to just draw it on in, you know? There's no rules to this here in terms of how you do it, as long as, as, long as you get get the result that you need, all right? So now you've got more, more of a rounded edge. These little portions over here, I'm going to hit the B key on the keyboard for the brush. These little areas here, you just might want to draw it in. Oops, sorry. Um, let's go over here, undo that one, and let's hit my, my B key. It's already selected. Now, here's a trick. If your brush is selected, you hold down the Option or the Alt key on your keyboard. That gives you your eyedropper. Let's go ahead and target the, the red that you want. Get in close. I'll make this brush a little smaller and just draw it in. All right? Draw in that shape. Okay? Just to keep that theme going. The same thing here circularize it okay and probably the same thing here well I'll have to I'll probably have to modify that manually so what I'll do is I'll create let's go target this here create a straight line probably straight across this way there we go tap and release Make a straight line from there to there. Okay. Hit the E key for the eraser tool and just erase that little tip there. All right. So the B isn't perfect. That's okay because this is just a drawing. All right. We know we're going to modify this later on. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. Um, hit my B key for my brush. And this has got to be modified a little bit better. So that's gonna. So all this is gonna be modified. We're gonna go utilize the um, uh, some of your vector tools to 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 clean all this up. Okay. So S and B. I'm thinking that the edge of this on the right hand side, the bottom of the S, should be close to uh, the edge of the of this piece coming down to the center, representing the S. So once again, L key for your lasso. And what I want is the polygonal lasso tool here. You can see on the right hand side, that's your shortcut. Just grab that piece, making sure you're on the right layer, right? Go to my um, V key, which is the shortcut for V as in Victor. It's a shortcut for the move tool, which is the top left hand corner of your tools bar. And then if you want to, Command or Control R will give you your rulers. The reason you need your rulers here is because I need to 
need to extract guides from these rulers. So if I take my cursor, put it in the center of my vertical edge and click and hold, it gives me a guide. And if I want to put it right there, that'll tell me where this piece should stop. So I will um, hit the, the arrow key on the keyboard and just nudge it on over. There we go. Let's turn off the one on the bottom. There we go. That's it. If we put another key here, and what I can do is I can either shorten that up or elongate the other one. I might want to elongate the other one. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. I like that thickness of that bottom one there. So I'm going to go get my lasso tool, select this. So this is nice, all the little tools you get to use here. Hold the shift keys, I don't want to constrain it, and just pull that on over there. That's cool. Um, pull this, just make sure that everything is, yeah, it's right on that line, it's aligned. Command D. Um, I could enlarge the M a little bit. I think since we since we enlarged, uh, we stretched that. I'm going to go select it. We have we have the space to do so. Command T, and I want to just you know enlarge it going just to there, right? Probably right about there. I may have to move some of this on over a little bit. I'm going to pull this out a little bit more. There we go. Command D or Control D for deselect. Go to my B symbol here, select it, and move it on, nudge it on over. So, in fact, I think they all can use a little bit more space in between them. So, I'm going to select all of these. V is in Victor, that gives you the move tool. Hit the arrow key on the keyboard and just nudge it on over until you're nice and comfortable with that spacing. Um, go back to my rectangular tool, click anywhere, it'll deselect it, and then just select that. Hit the V key for, for Victor. For the move tool, you get that dark little arrow with scissors, which means you're going to cut it and move it out. And I'm moving it all over. There we go. That's good. That works. That'll work just fine. Command or control D for deselect. D is in dog for deselect. Okay, there we go. Now I can go to my M and probably stretch it out just a little bit, just a teeny bit. But this time, Command T, this time I'm going to hold down um, my Alt key and Shift key. So Shift constrains it to one direction. I'm going to drag it in and Alt will, will, will resize from the center. See? Resizing from the center. Just bring it out a little bit more. Okay. That works. Now, what more can we do with this? Say, for example, we like this one. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that layer. We like this one. We're going to, we want to add some, some layer effects. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you next. So we have the option to add a little bit more pizzazz to this. Um, I want to modify a couple of things. I'm going to go to my guides here. I'm going to real control, control or command R for rulers. Have to have that turned on. Once the rulers are on, we can extract guides from this. We already did two vertically. I'm going to go click and hold and drag this here and, and put a guide along the top. Okay, and that's, that's fairly right. And then go along the bottom. You can see my S is probably, you know, not quite there. So go to my M, hit the marquee tool, select my X for S very quickly. Um, Command T, and then just hold the shift key and drag it down so that it just touches the bottom. As you can see, it's um yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and go to touch the bottom of this one here and 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 commit that changes and go deselect. Now, what I would like to do is probably see what more pizzazz we can add to this. So, on the left on the right hand side of my layer palette here, um, I'm going to double click that gray area. If I double click it, the layer styles palette is going to pop up here. And you might want to experiment what you can do with this one. Now, first of all, we have something like bevel and emboss, which is going to give you kind of a three dimensional look. So if I get in closer, you can see the beveling effect that it, that, that is going to add to this. I'm going to go ahead and double click that again to open it up. Um, with bevel and emboss, con 
now target it right here on the left on the right hand side we have options I can increase this depth I can increase the sizing you can see the effects there I can soften the edge you can also see how let's go ahead and get in closer and you can see how the edge is becoming soft here okay the sizing we have all types of options. Let's go and, and explore other options. We have the stroke. That's cool. So look at what we've done with the stroke here. Now this is a nice little technique. It's where you have opacities of, of red in there. So it's not one solid red that we that we've painted. It's all these different opacities. So with because of that, when we added in the stroke, it's adding stroke around all the around the edge of the logo, including around the areas that have less opaque paint, digital paint inside. So this could be a nice little technique for creating um, you know, a little custom logo. If I go to this, click click on the word stroke, you can get options here. I can make the stroke larger or smaller. It's your choice. I can change the color of the stroke. Here, target the color. Green, if I want to put green in there. You know, some type of other color. I want to keep it black for now. All right. So you have, you have those options. The opacity of stroke. I can bring down the opacity. Or bring it all the way up. Okay. All right. I can stroke on the outside. There. Let's bring this down so that it's restricted to the outside and we're losing that texturing in, in, uh, information. So if you want to play around with getting various opaque, you no know, transparent textures inside your, your logo shape for that uh, edging effect, uh, then we, we have to make sure that we target the inside as an option. We can go also the center, which is giving you similar, but it's just it's just edging the center portion. Or we can just restrict our effect to just the outside and we can adjust our, 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 our stroke just to the outside as you can see here. Well, what more can we do with this? Um, we can add, um, well, we can add a inner shadow, but first I want, I want to talk about the drop shadow. So I can come down to the bottom and add a drop shadow. And if once I target drop shadow, I can take my cursor, click and hold on the canvas and move that shadow around. That too can be part of your, your, your logo idea. Okay. I can, I can strengthen the shadow with the opacity settings. Currently it's 35%, but if I go really high, I can also change the color. So maybe I wanted something like a, a, a blue or a green or something like so. Okay. So these are drop shadows. You have, you've got options here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, and if I don't click and drag where I want it here, I can also use the, the angle option. The angle is doing the same thing. The distance and the angle. Just this way, I can click and hold and drag it. I think it's a lot more intuitive. The shadow area, the spread of the shadow, the size of the shadow. You have all types of options here, okay? All right, so let's play around with the inner shadow. So if I target an inner shadow, let's get in closer. And with the inner shadow, let's instead give it something like a, to give it a different color, let's give it a nice, bright yellow well I'll tell you what that one that wouldn't be a good idea because it's in multiplier mode if I if I change this to like you know screen or something or something like that it might work better but inner shadows is is it's adding a, a shadow a drop shadow on the inside of a text I think for what I what I would like to show you is more of the inner glow if I go to the inner glow and click on it you can see it's white by default. If I bring up the opacity, you see that there? I can change the color of this. And how about if we go to a nice little bright yellow? 
Okay, if I bring it on over, getting a little closer, see see what's happening here. Really fun stuff. So I can play with the opacity of the of the inner shadow. I can play with the the depth and the choke. So if I go to the sizing, I can really spread it out a little bit more. Don't forget, we've got the color. We can change this. All right. It's in screen blend mode. I can change the blend mode to color dodge, which makes it real harsh. And actually, it, we, we can barely see it. Or linear color. Your choice. I'm going to turn that one off. We've got satin, which is a, a, a texturing effect. Um, we also have um, the color overlay, which means if I want to override the initial red color that's there and replace it with another. So in this case, I've replaced it with gray. If I click on the color swatch, I can sw go to any color that I want. So I'm going to select the pure color here, any color that I want. It'll override the, the color that, that you decide to use on the layer, replace it with the one that you choose here. Okay, so you've got some fun little options here. So go ahead and click OK. All right, so let's turn this into something that I that's going to be non-destructive or resolutionless. So currently we've been working in a raster-based format. In other words, we're utilizing pixels to create a shape. Let's use the pen tool to go out and actually create a pure vector shape from this.